This one is for the UFC 273 co-main event, the highly anticipated rematch between current champion Aljamain Sterling and former champion Peter Yan. Okay, I'm going to upset a load of people doing this doing this war room because Aljamain Sterling definitely made a bit a bigger deal out of the knee to the head than he than he needed to. But he was also left far too long with the referee and the doctor standing there waiting for him to call the fight himself, which you just don't do in these circumstances. <clears throat> so just a bit of context, it took Aljo about four minutes to get to his stool. And by that point, Ben Askren was leaving the octagon after Masvidal dead bugged him. <laughs> so th there was no reason why Aljo needed to be struggling for that long. The reason why that happened is because the officials didn't call the fight as soon as they should have done. His knee was down. It was clearly an illegal shot. Uh, th there's a few more things to it as well, which which kind of further muddy the waters. But Peter Yan cheated. He kneed him in the head. He was a downed opponent. W w regardless of what your opinion of that rule is, or whether you prefer the old pride rules or whatever, it doesn't matter. Under the, the, the criteria that they were fighting, it was an illegal move and he got disqualified, got his belt stripped. And by disqualification, the 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 fouled fight against the win. So uh, Aljamain Sterling, 20 and three is his record. Um, his three losses, two split decisions and a TKO loss. So the, the knockout knee for, against Marlon Moraes and then two split decisions against Caraway and Asun Sao. On the other side, you've got uh, Peter Yan, whose record is 16 and two. Of course, one of those being a disqualification loss. The other one being a split decision loss. Um, due to the fact that he got a point deducted for headbutting. <laughs> Both 5'7", apparently. I would say Aljamain Sterling's probably a little bit taller. Um, he's also got a four-inch reach advantage on Peter Yan. But again, you know, the way that Yan fights, I've talked about this before, he nullifies reach advantage by just walking you down. So strikes landed per minute. For Aljo, it's 4.84. Uh, 4 for Peter Yan, it's 5.98. Striking accuracy is marginally different, but Peter Yan's got a three percentage difference. Slightly more strikes absorbed per minute, of course. 2.2 for Aljo, 4.1 for Peter Yan. But again, it goes back to this style. He walks into range and he blocks and he parries and he, and he, he allows his opponents to kind of work, but work on his terms, on his defense, which is very, very good. And I mean, look, at here we go. Striking defense. Oh, striking defense is, is, is you know, a, a minor advantage for um for, for Aljamain Sterling one percent but the, the point still stands is when Aljo's taking shots it's because he has to take them it's when Peter Yan's taking shots it's because he's he's putting himself in a range to force his opponent to work you know it's, it's his style you can watch sparring videos of him as well and, and he does the same thing it's that it's that working under duress style that he's got where he walks people down this is a really interesting one for a lot of reasons and and it's easy to get into like the psychoanalysis side of this one because of course the 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 drama around the end of the first fight the the performance on on Aljo's side and the fact that he walked away with the belt and it's awkward because it's the right thing that happened but it was it, it was made awkward by the way that it played out who knows what he's going to look like this next time around but the pressure of him coming in and defending the belt that a lot of people don't think he should have had in the first place based on how the fight was playing out it's a horrible position for him to be in, you know? Like, you can think Anthony Smith could have been in this very same situation had he stayed down when he got kneed by John Jones. We have to recognise that Peter Yan broke the rules. If he is the champion of this sport, then he has to know the rules inside out. I would argue that he does. So I would argue that, that, that he intentionally knew that that was an illegal knee and he still threw it anyway. Well, I, maybe I'm overestimating Peter Yan, but I think he's a, I think he's a devastating fighter. And I think he's... I think his, his shortcoming maybe is his lack of control. You, you don't ever want to see fights end like that, but what you do want to want is a deterrent big enough for the offending fighter to not want to do it again. Like, will Peter Yan near the head of a downed opponent again? Probably not. You learn that lesson once, and when it costs you a title, it stays with you, I'm sure. It's going to be a great fight.